This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. The teenage phenom. So Harmon knew exactly what he was dealing with when the grim-faced woods strode onto the range to the cheers of several hundred people who had packed the grandstand once they spotted Harmon. Golf fans knew that if Butch was on the range, Tiger was likely to be there shortly. I'm getting stuck again, Woods said as he walked up to Harmon. Woods isn't one for small talk, especially during a major. There was no chatting about how the day had gone or any discussion of the lead or about playing the next day with Garcia. The two men were focused on one thing, Woods' golf swing. I know you are, Harmon said. Let's get it fixed. They went to work. Woods hitting shots, Harmon, arms folded, standing opposite him, watching. Every once in a while, Harmon would stand next to Woods and show him the kind of motion he wanted him to make. Woods would nod and hit more balls. Even though the sun wouldn't set until 8.30, Woods and Harmon knew they were rapidly running out of time. The sun dropped in the western sky, and the air began to cool. Woods kept hitting ball after ball. Harmon kept watching and talking. It was dark when they finally stopped. Harmon liked what he was seeing. By the time we finished, he had it exactly where we wanted it to be, Harmon said. Even so, I could tell he wasn't happy. It is that perfectionist nature that is part of Woods' greatness. Every time he wins a major title, he celebrates for about fifteen minutes and then turns his mind to the next one. At that moment, he wasn't just thinking about winning the U.S. Open the next day. He was thinking about winning all four majors in the same year. He had already won the Masters in April, and he was now eighteen holes away from winning the Open for the second time in three years. But he wasn't especially happy with his golf swing. Harmon knew that. He always wants to tinker, he said. If I say to him, I like what I'm seeing, that's fine. That's not what he really wants to hear. He wants me to tell him something, anything, that's going to make him feel better about his swing. That day at Beth Page, I knew what was going on. It wasn't just that his swing hadn't been great that day. It wasn't bad, just not great. But he had been talking to Mark O'Meara and Hank Haney about Hank's swing theories. I got that. I know how close he and Mark are and how much he respects Mark. But I could tell he wanted to make some swing changes. I wasn't going to give him some kind of new move just to tell him something. His golf swing was good. Hell, he was about to win his eighth major title and his second in a row. Why would I tell him to change that? As Woods walked to his car, followed by Williams and his security retinue, Harmon watched him. It occurred to him at that moment that he might not be Woods' teacher for very much longer. Woods won the Open the next day by three shots over Phil Mickelson. The only thing that could have stopped him was darkness. A rain delay kept him on the golf course until dusk, and it looked as if he might not finish until Monday morning. But with a comfortable three-shot lead, he eagerly played the 18th hole, even in terrible light, so he could take the trophy home with him that night. Four weeks later, Woods arrived at Muirfield, which is located outside Edinburgh in Scotland, to begin preparing for the British Open. As always, Harmon was waiting for him, ready to go through their normal pre-major ritual, spend some time on the range, then walk with Woods around the golf course as he played his practice rounds. This is standard procedure for most teachers and their pupils. When Woods spotted Harmon waiting for him on the range at Muirfield, he walked over and the two men shook hands. Look, Butch, I'm okay this week, Woods said quietly. I've got it. Harmon understood exactly what Woods was saying, but he wanted to be sure. You don't need me out here, he said, making it more a statement than a question. No, I don't. Thanks. Good luck, Tiger. Thanks. That was it. Eight years after they first began working together... Eight major championship victories later, Woods, in a matter of about thirty seconds, had fired Harmon. Woods walked to a spot on the range that had been cleared for him to start hitting balls, without Harmon watching him.
Within 48 hours, the story was out that Woods and Harmon had split. That Saturday...